certain things used to make us do and stuff like that would affect my school life um, quite, quite uh, dramatically. I was never allowed any new, new stuff in the house, so never anything new. Um, was everything, everything was planned out. Um, down to the days, certain days of eat certain meals. It's like anything, you know, it's like you get up, you go to work, routine, and you, you get used to it, it's the same. Like I'd get used to, not, not that she, she was violent, but not on a regular basis, it'd be more, and she'd hit her breaking point. For instance, if I did something that didn't meet with her regime, or like, nothing from upstairs was allowed downstairs, nothing from downstairs was allowed upstairs, so if you brought something down, then she could get violent. It's pretty clear if you were to meet my mum that you'd see she's in, she needs help. Um, considering these people see her at least once a fortnight, which I don't think is enough. Um, she'll continue to lie away through it even though she weighs about five stone. Um, it's pretty clear that she's not getting any better. Me, it was more like just watching my mum like, you know what I mean, deteriorating so rapidly to the point that she's passing out daily because she's not eating, harming herself, everything like that. I mean, from, from my, my personal experience, the social workers a lot of the time they come round and it'd be more like they'd just ask questions just to fill out forms. They never actually, um, you know, they never really went into much depth uh, regarding, regarding us as kids, regarding my mum's actual health. It was more a fact of, you know, the boxes to tick, so she'd tick them. You know, my mum not thinking, you bare face lying to these people. They're not stupid, and that's the thing that really grinds me, you know, they're not dumb. They must have been sitting there thinking, look at these kids here, look at this house, like, all messed up and that. And she's sitting there as skinny as anything, and you really think there's nothing wrong with that. And, and then they left. For her to get this far to now still be alive is a miracle as far as I'm concerned. For Christmas I got this, uh, you know, invisible ink pens and that. I got one of them and you got this little torch of it and when you shine the torch over it you can read it. So I've written this invisible ink just in case she found it, you know, just in case she stopped me and wanted to look through my pockets or whatever because that would happen sometimes to prevent us sneaking things in and out. Um, so I've written this invisible ink and she never stopped me or looked through it and I tapped the window and the social worker wrote it down to say something and I just launched this little little envelope with the thing in the note in, a little light in that through it and just said read that. Next day I got home from school and she weren't there. And I remember I remember seeing walking into the house and she was always there. And I remember seeing her boots for the set end, the ones that she always wore. And it just mattered, I don't know, I clocked them and I thought, nah, like she ain't here. Like. And I remember going absolutely mental and like, put holes all in, in the walls and everything like that. And ended up just like, crying for about three hours because I was just so distraught, obviously thinking, so I suppose I felt guilty in a way, guilty that I'd done that to my mum. Don't withheld information, because that's what I did for so many years. You know, to my grandparents, stuff like that. Just, my mum said not to say anything, so you don't, but you have to.